Hey, I'm John Grease III. I'm the founder of Garage Gym Life, and this is an honor for me to be talking to my guy, Real Robinson. He is a content creator on YouTube, and I follow him because I've actually been studying him and studying how he puts together his video titles, how he does everything. I reached out to Real because he has a home gym, and he is attacking some serious physique goals in that home gym that's actually going to help him with what he does on YouTube. Real, my man, thanks for being here. Absolutely, man. Thank you for having me on this show. Like you said, it's a beginning. It's We're in the beginning stages of the home gym process. We got the bench. We got some dumbbells. We got some plates to press up for a little bit, but it's you got to start somewhere, and it shows you that no matter what you have, there's no excuses, and there's too much time in the day to not to treat, put your body as a priority. Man, that is Dude, we could probably just stop right there, but I want to <laughs> I want to dig a little bit more into it okay. um, because I want to unpack like some process things. Hey guys, we're gonna go back to the video you were watching in just a second, but I just want to give you a quick reminder that Garage Gym Life Media is sponsored by you. We don't have any big names backing us. Instead, you are the reason why we can do what we do. And the easiest way for you to support us and help us to continue to do that is by visiting our merch store, which you can find by going to the bottom of this video right there and checking out our store shelf. We have merch like this that's got a home gym perspective, as well as motivational shirts like this, which are good for fitness lovers, no matter whether they have a home gym or not. But regardless of which shirt you choose, just know that when you shop our store, you are helping us bring you live streams as well as the freshest home gym content available. As always, thank you for your support. When I was looking at your setup, I said, man, that is that, that's that pure, that's the purest part of a home gym because like all the possibilities are in front of you. You don't really, you can make excuses, but it's really on you to actually make the progress. It's kind of like your creativity, your discipline, and like we were saying, your consistency that, that's going to make it happen. What was it that motivated you to start your fitness journey? Well, I'm 30 years old now, so I'm 12 years post high school. I played football from the time I was six years old to the time I was 18, played basketball, did a little track lacrosse. So I always kept in some type of sport shape. Like it used to be, I used to be able to go from practice to go run pickup basketball. Like that oh, used wow. to be, that used to That's be. That's the young man talk. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Started a family young, you nice. know what I'm saying? Got complacent over time and put on a lot of dad weight. And I seen a lot of peaks and valleys. I would lose a lot, gain it back, lose a lot, gain it back. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to practice consistency, man. My, I've had some significant life changes over the last year. I had a divorce, I'm not ashamed to say it. You know what I'm saying? We had a messy split up custody situation right. that can weigh on the mind. So not only oh, do I want to improve my physical health my mental health i'm putting all of that as a priority and taking care of myself and it's humbling to step on the scale and see 301 pounds because that's all it took for me to say all right it's time to wake up i've gained weight over the years but i never hit over that 300 pound mark and when i seen that i was like okay rio you got to go back to the lab you got to do everything it takes you got kids to live for you got health to look out for and your trying to become a public figure and you got to look the part if you're going to if you're going to really do this you know it comes a part of the territory so i figure it's time to do it okay so there's so much in there number one you know congratulations on making that step and saying i'm going to be healthy not just for myself but for my kids my wife and i have five kids all right so we have four boys and a little starting girl. lineup Man, hey, I did my part, all right? It's on y'all now. <laughs> and, and the thing I always tell people is kids don't do what you tell them. They do what they see. They'll do what you tell them while you're around. But as soon as you're gone, they'll, they'll do what they've seen. And so I commend you for being aware enough of the fact that you needed to get in shape, not just for yourself, but also for them. And I love the fact that you chose to do it in a home gym. And even that is connected to the fact that, like you said, you're trying to become a public figure. I mean, you're around athletes all day. You can't be out there, you know, Chase Young walking around you in a belly shirt and you kind of like looking at him like, yeah, okay. <laughs> That's going to kind of like prey on your mind a little bit. That dad so, bod ain't going to cut it. <laughs> I know, right? But at the same time, you, you don't have... Your approach is a little bit different from a lot of the content creators who do NFL content. You know, no knock on them. That's their process. But, you know, they basically get the information by watching training camp videos, uh, watching the press conferences, 
They obviously watch the games. They watch the all 22. And then they give you an analysis that way. You were at practice like every day of training camp, correct? <laughs> yeah, every day like, they let you be there, you were there. <laughs> yeah, I went there like seven times this year, man. I wanted, I wanted all that up close access. And my exactly. objective is all the fans who don't get to make it out, I want them to pretty much live vicariously through me, through the journey of the access that the team allows me. <laughs> 100%. And, and the reason I brought that up is because it is hot. Oh, yeah. And if you are out of shape, that's going to, you know, attack your health. I mean, that's not something that's easy to do, even if you're, you're not really out there running like the players are, but you still are out there. I mean, it's like 100 degrees heat. So there's that. And then, as you say, you know, you're a public figure, you know, you got, you saying they, you know, eventually you're going to be selling merch. I don't know if you sell merch already, but you're going to be selling merch. It, working on it right now, man. All right. So who's going to be the first model modeling your merch? It's going to be you, right? So you want to look like him, you know Max. what I mean? You don't want to, you don't want to be the guy that's like, oh yeah, I ain't trying to look like that. So although you're not in the fitness industry, you're in the industry where your appearance can be an asset. So you, you made a decision. All right. I got to make a change. And you gave like some very simple to understand, but not easy to follow practices that you've, that you've been doing. Um, so what do you, what's your daily routine looking like? All right. So now like I'm used to, like I've worked nights for so many years. I'm used to being up at all types of crazy times of the day. I've started my day earlier. I'm up closer to six, six thirty AM. Now okay. me and my roommate go for a walk jog run that ranges from either two and a half miles up to five, which is two and a half going at that park. Coming. Yep, okay. we, yep, we walk all the way, we walk all the way up the trail. I get a huge bottle of water, fill it up, fill it up a couple times a day. I'm drinking probably 130 to 140 fluid ounces of water a day. Yikes. So I'm, I'm hitting the bathroom like a pregnant woman, but you Aquaman. <laughs> yeah, pretty much because I think a lot of my problem with gaining weight is empty calories. I love mm. me some Tropicana juice. I love me some juice, man. Oh, okay. I, I'm telling you, the, the, the passion fruit Welsh's juice don't last 24 <laughs> hours if it's around me. So I got you. my biggest thing is cutting out everything that's not water. So pretty much water, sparkling water, or got maybe you. a body armor or something a day. Okay. But that not eating after a certain time of day. I'm not eating after 6 30, 7 p.m. anymore. If anything, it'll be something okay. very small, like a few grapes, a couple strawberries or something. Okay. I'm not eating past a certain time. And I'm making sure I get all my meals in. I used to think you needed to skip meals to lose right. weight, but you actually like I have a football build. Yeah, I'm six feet. Right now I'm 260, meaning I'm 41 pounds down. But oh, I didn't yeah. I didn't feel like I looked like I was 300 pounds because I carry right. the weight athletically but I'm 260 right now which is 40 pounds down that's progress but oh yeah you gotta 100%. get your carbs and your proteins and stuff in I'm getting plant-based stuff I like plant-based protein okay. I use planta um get a nice morning shake going I eat lots of salmon lots okay. of salad greens and other than that, I haven't changed too much of what I'm eating, more so than changing the portion size, portion control. Nice. Everything nice. is in moderation, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, that's interesting because there's a, I actually interviewed a guy on my channel a few years ago who went from, he lost 190 pounds. Wow. And he did it by simply with what you're talking about with the portion size and he used the plate method, right? And so anybody who wants to see that, just click right up there and you can and watch that video. But um, he basically would stick his hand up on a plate and he says, okay, this much of the plate is going to be my protein or, you know, or my carbs or whatever. He just divided it up according to that. And the reason he liked that method is because you could take it with you to a restaurant. Mm -hmm. He said, if I have to go to a restaurant to eat, I don't want to have, I'm not going to be the dude at the restaurant with Tupperware. I'm not going to be the one that's like, you know, I mean, there's all these little tricks, you know, and I, I've heard them all, you know, <laughs> drink a protein shake before you eat. That way you'll fill yourself up so you won't eat as much, right? Um, drink water, you know, like your parents used to tell you eat before you drink. Well, then we reverse it. Go ahead, drink some water first before all you the eat. Tricks. <laughs> yeah, just to make sure that you're, you're actually, you might be thirsty and think you're hungry. Also drink water because you, maybe you're eating because you're bored. So drink some water and just slow down a little bit and maybe that'll help it out, right? I want to back up a little bit because you said that you guys run, walk, jog. Um, is this a, all right, what do I feel like doing today? Because you say you do it every day. So is this a, what do I feel like doing today? Or is it, all right, we start out jogging, then we speed up, then we walk, 
then we run back, then we jog in, jog in to finish off. Or how does that work? It's kind of just play it by ear type of situation. Okay. And I'm trying to get it to seven days a week. Right now, I'm at least making sure Monday through Friday, I get it in every week. No excuses. Yes. I'm trying to get it to a point where I, I, I knock one out every day, knock some yes. type of run out every day. But me, for the most part, since I'm playing catch up, you know, he's starting from a different point of where I'm starting at body wise, body composition wise, stamina wise. So. Yeah. For me, it's mostly like a good speed walk with intervals of jogging in between it. And there's a lot of uphill going on the way up. Oh, like, nice. like say when I go two and a half miles up, most a lot of that is going uphill and okay. coming back, it's downhill. So it's a good combination of interval training. I find that running uphill, although it's harder, it's easier on my knees. And then mm. coming downhill, Cause you're trying to slow yourself down. It's like yeah. harder. It's easier. No, I but agree. It's, but it's harder on the knees. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. I That's agree. It, it, it definitely. The momentum feels differently. It's almost like you got to pull back a little bit. Just yeah. You're your like, body. man, I don't know about this. So I'm 49. Right. So when I'm going, if I'm That's running down a hill, uh, Hey, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Uh, but, but it's like, yeah, <laughs> uh, living proof, but it's like, you know, if you're going down a hill, uh, that's, that's murderous on my knees. So I'm more likely to, I, what I used to like doing is run to a point, turn around, run back. That way when I'm done, I'm home, right? I don't like running around tracks because I hate running. So I'm like, all right, I want to run to somewhere, turn around, run back. That way when I'm done, I'm home, right? But now I'm more likely to run as fast as I can to a place, stop and walk back and let that walk back be my recovery, and, you know, I'm still home when I'm done, but that walk back is my recovery, especially since I tip, you know, I, I do like, I'm doing like what you do. So it's like running, but then also lifting weights. Um, and then I got to spend a little bit more time on like mobility and stretching like that. Cause you know, my joints are about to feel like sometimes hey, they feel like hey, they're like 10 hey, years me, older than me. Me too, man. I got to get a foam roll in to start my day every day. Because man. if not, I feel like, oh, I can't even get out of bed. I tell people, I'm like, I'm 49, but my knees are 59. So that's it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now let's talk about some mechanical stuff because you guys have that bench. I saw the, the bench in there. It's in the middle of the garage floor. My first bench was very narrow. So you had a, there was some death defying activities going on because, you know, if, if you saw Pump and Iron, the bench press that Franco Colombo was using, you know, he made it look simple. But when you have a very narrow bench, you got to be careful how you load and unload the sides or else the whole thing will tip over, right? But oh, yours, sure. is, yours is nice and wide, and so you're able to load it. What's your workout routine? I mean, right now, we're pretty much trying to get some type of lift in every day, even if it's something small, even if okay. it's throw all the weight off the bar and do burnouts, get as much mm. reps as possible. Because I remember... I remember playing football. So you do like a football school. kind of workout? Yeah, basically? I remember I remember okay. playing football in high school and there would be days where we would kind of laugh at coach until we saw how rigorous it got. He'd say take all the weights off of everything. We'd be like what you talking about take all the weights off. Yeah. And He'd just be like, go until your arms can't no more. You get to about 120 reps on the bar and you can't even uh, get the bar. That's murderous. You just like, man. Yeah, man. So I'm doing stuff like that. Like okay. I kind of alternate through the days. Like I'll start with the first day and we'll start to load it up with a little bit of weight, try to get three or four sets of 10 to 12 reps. And it's a bench, right? On the bench. Yep. Okay, on the okay. bench. And I do a, a, a multitude of things on there. Like I, I do curls. I do curls in sets of 21s that we used to do okay. in football where we would do seven from the bottom to your right. obliques, seven from your shoulders to your chest, and then and seven, seven halfway. Curl. So three sets of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I would go to like a military press, do um, a set of 10 of these, put it okay. behind your head, 10 of these. Like I, I just come up with different ways okay. to do it. Okay. Sometimes I just take a plate, plate press it, do four or five sets you. of 20. Like I just, I try to dig back into everything that I've ever done in football weight training and find nice. something to do because right now, this is what we have. And as we start to matriculate right. more items to add to our home gym, we're going to make the best out of what we have in the building right now. All right, that, that, that's a hundred percent. Now I'm going to ask you the question. What do you do for your lower body? Besides the running, uh, I just I just load up some weight on the bar and I had some squats and some lunges in the garage and stuff Beautiful. like that. Beautiful. And I'm trying to I'm trying to 
be more consistent because once I do get in shape, I don't want to be too top heavy, man. I don't want to be. I know, all, right? All my, I don't want to be fifty cent up top and look like a, <laughs> a cornerback down low, man. I don't, I'm good on that, man. Oh god, you're not looking like uh, what's that chicken? The chicken hawk from Foghorn Leghorn. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, man. I got you. All right. So the thing that is very difficult to do when you first start out is obviously to, to basically the consistency. How did you build that consistency consistency in the beginning? Because you've lost 40 pounds. So once you start seeing progress, it's easy to like, yeah, let's go. We got momentum going. But talk to me about day, not don't tell me about day one. Because you were motivated on day one. You're like, I'm 300 pounds. I got to do something. Tell me about day three when you're in pain and it sucked and you ain't lost a pound yet. And How'd I'm, you get through that? And I'm starving. I'm yeah. hungry. I'm looking at all this stuff. <laughs> what kept me motivated is when I'm focused on something, it becomes an obsession, an addiction. Like if you watch, mm. a, you watch The Last Dance, how Jordan is, how Kobe was, how yeah. they obsessed over goals, like... I obsess over it. They say, don't weigh yourself every day. I weigh myself at night every day to make sure I didn't go too crazy eating. And I weigh myself in the morning every day so I know exactly what my accurate weight is. I, I did not miss I got you. a weigh-in at night or the morning. They tell me that's not the way to do it. I do it that way anyway. I try to outdo my water intake as much as possible. On the side, I'm out doing a lot of work like Instacart, DoorDash, Grubhub. So right. that keeps me moving. Instacart. Yesterday, I did an order on Instacart where someone ordered 12 cases of water and I had to go up a flight of steps. I took I took six trips, two at a time, up this flight of steps. That was probably the best workout I got this week. Oh, I'm sure. But just getting, staying active, parking the car further instead of looking for a parking spot, taking the wow. stairs and not the elevator. It's little things like that that become part of your routine and they become what help get you to that next point of staying motivated and going towards your goals. Because I'm trying to lose another 40 more. Okay, so now I'm going to ask you a couple of questions that um, will show you that I really do watch your, your channel. Uh, Mark Holmes who is a Cowboys fan, but nobody, nobody's perfect. Um, <laughs> he, uh, he, from what you've said, is an excellent cook. Oh, so that, that goes into, you're going to have, you know, it's all of us, the holidays are coming up. And for you, it's football season now. This is part of what you do. Mm -hmm. You you have to go to Mark's. I mean, I guess you don't have to go to his house. Oh, no, but, I'll, be, I'll but, be at Mark's on the way. That's game, what I'm saying. You, know? <laughs> you go to his house because that's part of what you do, right? You know there's going to be food there. And Mark ain't, Mark ain't going to cook nothing for your diet. He's cooking, you know, because he's a cook, right? Mm -hmm. what's, do you, what's your strategy going to be for making sure you don't fall off the wagon after you, you're going to make a lot of progress? Then you're going to go into this environment where temptation is going to be everywhere. I, mm -hmm. I feel your pain, dude. My, my wife is Puerto Rican. <laughs> And she cooks amazing food. All right. Yeah, I'm telling I'm you. I was married to a Puerto Rican for 12 years. So I know I know the vibes, you, my guy. You just like, oh the alcapurias, the pasteles, oh my the God. The the pernil, you. all of it, bro. Everybody who's watching this is like hearing that. And if you don't know what that is, I'm telling you, you're not living your best life. Hell okay. Yeah. And then I'm West African and my mom cooks West African food all the time. And I'm telling you right now, you can't put West African food in my fitness pal. All right. So <laughs> anyway, so I just tell you all that. To, to let you know I understand the struggle, but what's your plan, your strategy for when you get in situations where you have to have, this is really a work meeting, where you have to have yourself around things that might throw you off track? Uh, I mean, I would just say for the weeks that I know that I'm going to go to a function where there's going to be a multitude of food that if I eat a lot of it could definitely throw me off guard. I'll treat that as the cheat day, you know, because no everybody problem. has to have some sort of day where they say, don't worry about the diet today. Eat what you got to do. Still be active. Get on your feet a little bit. I'll maybe do something like go, walk a little longer before I go there in the morning. You okay. know what I'm saying? Up my walk to three miles going and coming. Make it six. Drink me some water before I gotcha. go and have a very small dinner because we're going to just combine that as breakfast and lunch. Start the day Got with you. a protein shake. 100%. Go eat whatever I need to eat at Cowboy Joe Boo's house. <laughs> eat me a salad with a piece of salmon for dinner. Call it a day. Maybe get a light lift then before I go to work. But right. I mean, before I go to sleep. But, you know, 
there, there's, I imagine the ramp up of my activity and workouts are going to be a lot more at the time. So okay. that's not even really, it's something I should be cognizant of, but not something I feel like I'm going to be too worried about at the time, as long as I don't make a habit and stacking days of eating like that. I mean, because I brought it up because, so number one, that's going to be, it's going to be colder. That boy cooks so the, too. So the, I'm just saying cook. the tendency <laughs> is to eat more because it's cold, right? Yeah. And then you're going to be, if you're not going to his house, you might be going to the games. And I'm going to tell you right now, whether it's FedEx Field or anywhere else, I have never been to a stadium where the food is healthy. All oh, right. No. <laughs> so you're in a situation where it's like, okay, I got to be here for work. Actually, what you said reminds me of a sign I saw on a, it's on a lot of convenience stores. Like you see it on like, uh, like the Shell gas station, it's like up there. We just ignore it, right? Mm -hmm. But it says balance what you eat, drink, and do. And that's exactly what you just said. Just balance it. And I think what ends up happening is we tend to become sluggish in the wintertime, but we eat more. And then next thing you know, you know, it's New Year's Day and you're looking at yourself trying to figure out who you are. You know? <laughs> who new year, new me. <laughs> yeah, who trapped me in this fat suit? I know I got muscle under here. So um, what would be your advice to somebody who is starting out and they're trying to, you know, kind of go down that pathway that you're, you're on right now? What, what's some encouragement? Let's say they're on day three. They're watching this. They're on day three. And all, all they've achieved so far has made themselves sore. What's your best advice for them? Man, for me, motivate yourself. We all had a time in our life where we looked the way that we want to get back to and even better. Look at old pictures of yourself. I know for me, I, it motivates me to see pictures of how I don't want to look. I see a lot mm. of pictures and I'm like, man, look how many necks I have here. Like, man, like <laughs> this shirt would look so good if, if, if the belly wasn't sticking out. Like I, I, I nice. you gotta, you gotta stay locked in whatever it takes to motivate you. You gotta stay locked in. You gotta, you gotta just do it. Like it's going to suck. It's going to feel bad. It's going to feel painful. You're not going to want to get out of bed and do it again, but the more repetition you do it, it becomes a part of your daily routine. And you start to realize that none of these life created excuses that we make as people as to why we can't work out or eat better actually make sense because there's 24 hours in the day and someone that works 12 to 16 hours has time to get a workout in and to worry about their diet. So there is no excuse for anybody to let themselves go. And I finally realized that and turned that on in my brain. Nice. Well, look, you guys can hear the passion in Rio's voice when he's just talking about this. And this isn't even his area. So no. that just tells you how excited and how awesome his content is if you are watching something that he's talking about that is in his area. And like I said, he is a content creator for Washington Commanders. Um, in fact, he's so good that the team asked him to be one of their uh, select group of fan ambassadors. So, you know, they're not letting just anybody come in there and do that. But definitely you want to check Rio out here on YouTube. I watch every single one of your videos, not just because I'm a Commanders fan, but also because, like I said, I study good content on YouTube Appreciate because that, I want to put out good content on YouTube. I'm telling you, Rio is more than just a YouTube content creator. He is also someone who has experienced how to grow his YouTube channel in a crowded field of people who are talking about the exact same stuff he's talking about. So if you are a member of our YouTube channel, you can go right there and you can check out Rio's exclusive tips for our YouTube channel members, where he tells you how you can grow your own YouTube channel. But before we do that, Rio, I want everybody to be able to watch your Commander's content as well. So please let everybody know where they can follow you on YouTube and everywhere else that you are because your content is truly awesome. Absolutely, man. Um, so YouTube, just search Rio Robinson, Rio Robinson Commanders. My show is called Rambling with Rio, but the channel is under my name, Rio Robinson. You'll see me with the team issue Letterman jacket on. You see me with the banner with the two logos on the side. Creating constant and consistent quality, raw, unfiltered parental advisory. Not safe for work because I'm not a polished journalist, you know. I'm articulate. I'm well-spoken. I did take communications in school for two years, but I like to come from a fan's perspective, impartially, objectively, and I like to have fun. There's not enough 
fun in sports talk. You know, this is fun. We put our passion and it's one of the things that distracts us from our typical lives and the stresses of adulting, you know? So there's going to be plenty of jokes, plenty of language and great interaction on the channel. Check me out there or follow me on any social media platform, Twitter, Instagram, at Rio underscore Robinson 91. I was born in 91. That was the last time this team won over 11 games and won a Super Bowl. So my entire life, I've watched a bad team and managed to still rep them to the death of me as if they've ever done anything for me. So if I could be a fan, you could be a fan of anything, man. Appreciate you for having me on, my guy.